Turning now to the fallout from the Supreme Court ruling upholding President Trump's travel ban, many are asking if the decision could open the door to an expanded travel ban from the president. With us now, David Weinstein, partner at Hinshaw and Culbertson. He's also a former U.S. assistant attorney. David, thanks so much for joining us here this evening. Before we get into the specifics of what may now be within the president's power to do, let's talk about the immediate and practical effects of today's ruling. What does this mean in the simplest terms? In the simplest terms, it means that the order that the president put into effect back in September that was modified shortly after that is back in effect. The hold that Hawaii had put on this nationwide, despite the fact that the suit was just brought in Hawaii, has been lifted. And now the department is free to enforce these regulations as they've been set out in the proclamation. We have so many people here in South Florida who come here from other parts of the world, uh, including Venezuela, which you can see from that map is one of the country, uh, one of the countries rather that is on that uh, on that travel ban list. So uh, I understand that there are differences when it comes to the restrictions from people from Venezuela as opposed to people from other countries like Syria or Somalia. And that's part of the reason why the Supreme Court, in a narrow decision, upheld this proclamation as, that was issued by the president. The concern is national security, and the concern with places like Venezuela is that the vetting process was insufficient. There is so much perceived and actual corruption that takes place. There was no confidence that the people who were being vetted to travel from Venezuela were actually being cleared and didn't pose a national security threat. Some of that exists for those other countries, but they have a little more faith and confidence in some of these other countries who have worked closely with the United States and have allowed us to participate in some of the vetting and whose policies and practices we come to rely on. Uh, David, we all remember when the president was campaigning when he said Donald Trump is calling for a ban on Muslims. And so there's two things here. There's the rhetoric by the president, the comments that he made, and there is the law and the authority that the president has. What the, the Supreme Court obviously fell on the side of the law, that the president has the authority, despite what he says, what comes out of his own mouth. And that's one of the things that Chief Justice Roberts spent some time talking about in his opinion. They heard the rhetoric. They heard what came out of his mouth. They did take that into account, but when they looked at what was on the paper, the regulations that are set out in the 12 pages of this most recent order, they felt that despite the rhetoric, there was actually some semblance of a plan as to how these people were going to be vetted, how it was going to come through. They pointed out the fact that some of the countries who had originally been on the list had been updated and cleared, and now those countries were no longer on the list. But they all warned the president, whether it was in the majority or the dissenting and concurring opinions, we are hearing what you're saying and we're watching it, and this time we agree that the law is one that can withstand scrutiny. Maybe not so the next time. Uh, David, at this point, the travel ban is a separate issue from the immigration battle that we're all watching unfold as far as people coming into the U.S. illegally at the border with Texas. But there are concerns that with this ruling, the president has been given these broad powers to target and ban entire nationalities of people. So what are the parameters? Is there sort of a cap on what the president can do? Is it limited just to the nations originally listed? It's limited for now to the nations that were originally listed. And keep in mind that this now all goes back to the district courts. If somebody wants to challenge this travel ban on another level and they want to say that as applied, you're not doing what you said you were doing, they'll get another crack at this. What they said was that temporary hold that was in place, that's gone. Now you're free to enforce this. But as to other countries that it can be expanded upon, as long as the concern is the national security of the country, they're going to give the president a lot of leeway in determining who can come in and who can has to be kept out. For him to just put a blanket assertion that anybody that comes to the border, we're not going to let them in. They're not going to let him go just that far. Well, there are so many contentious issues when it comes to border security uh, and differences between the way that the president and a lot of Republicans view it as opposed to Democrats. And we have a midterm election coming up that may give us an idea about how the country and how voters feel about all of this. But does this ruling today at the Supreme Court give President Trump and uh, other conservatives like him uh, sort of does it embolden them to try to push forward more restrictive immigration uh, rules and practices because of what the Supreme Court said today? That it absolutely does. It, it, it certainly gives them a perception that what they did was correct and it followed the law and that there was nothing unconstitutional or improper about it. The question becomes, once they're emboldened, just how far are they going to take this? Because 
It was a 5-4 decision. This was not a slam dunk. This was not 9-0. This was not even 7-2. There's a swing vote in there in the middle. If it had gone perhaps too far or there had not been some sort of neutral rationale as to why people could or couldn't come in, they would have struck down this law and upheld the decision of the lower court. It's certainly a major victory for the administration. David Weinstein, thank you for coming in, helping us understand it better. You're welcome. Good Always glad to help.